Okay, if you choose to do the water section of the water mill, because the top half or the uh, house half will come off, so you don't have to do this if you don't want to. If you choose to do it, there's three different levels to the water mill. There's this W3, there's a larger W2, and then there's the uh, one foot by one foot section that's the W1. All of these are on uh, pink or blue insulating foam is what I'm putting them on. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to start by plotting the points of the first one and then we'll cut the foam out the correct size. Now whenever you get this there's probably a moisture barrier on it. In other words a thin sheet of plastic. What you can do is you can just peel that off and I don't know what would happen if you left it on but I just feel like I get a better glue bond to it if I don't. Now when we plot the bottom section one thing that you want to keep in mind is that any printing that's on this foam you want that printing to be face down, not face up. The reason is because, and trial by error here, uh, when you actually try to uh, glue the river texture down onto this, you'll notice that you can see letters and words through the printing here of the river bottom. So I don't want any words or letters to go through here and be able to read it. So that's a lesson I learned the hard way. So whenever you're plotting this out and doing this for the main bottom of the river, uh, you want to do this no printing side up because we're just going to paste this river bottom printing directly right on the front here. Okay, so on with it. What we're going to do is you want to put this underneath your plan and to make sure that you've got foam all the way around underneath. And I am going to use the uh, pokey end of a compass here to poke all the way down through. And you're going to see that these are kind of uh, labeled here uh, for the W1. So we're going to poke all of the W1 holes here. So there's one in this corner right here. There's a W1 on this corner right here. A W1 over here. And a W1 over here. And the last part is this hole right here that we're going to cut out for where the water wheel is going to set down in. So we've got four corners to poke through on here. Okay. The reason we have to cut that out is because the water wheel should look submerged or more submerged than just kind of resting on top of the river. Okay, so we're going to shove that out of the way. And what we're going to do is uh, connect the dots with an ink pen. And you can use a regular ruler to do this. Uh, if you've got something longer, it's a little handy for cutting. I'll use that uh, later. But just put it uh, one dot over here, one dot over there. And take a ballpoint pen, something that will give you a good line on the foam. And go ahead and we're going to mark this square and mark this hole out in pen. Okay, now that we have this plotted out and lined out in ink pen, what we're going to do is I'm going to use this uh, retractable blade here. Uh, this has, uh, I think, what, 18 millimeter uh, size of blades on this, but any, I like it because you can extend this out really long and it cuts foam really well. Uh, you want to try whenever you cut the edges to go straight up and down because at least this front edge and the side edge is where the uh, water wheel goes. Uh, we want them to be pretty straight up and down because we're going to try to dam it off and we want the sides of it to be, you know, uh, perpendicular to the table. So what you want to do is just lay the uh, ruler straight edge of some kind down. And I've got a bigger one. It's a little easier when you're, you know, uh, rather than using that small ruler to do this. So I'm just going to go through and I'm going to score it a little bit. And I'm going to go back down and I'm going to score it a little bit more. And then if you don't want to scratch your tabletop, what you can do at this point is kind of lift it up. And you've already got kind of a nice groove there. So just kind of lift it up off the tabletop and do your final cut that way. Okay, with all four sides cut, you should be able to just take that out of there. Now right here, uh, if, you'll, if you look on the plan, you'll notice that it says that right here should be sloped and right there should be sloped. I'm going to slope those at about a 45 degree angle. It's not real critical, but you know, your, for your wheel to set in there properly, we do need to uh, we do need to have that bend a little bit. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to cut past a little bit here and cut past a little bit here, and then you, to cut at 45, just take your best guess as where that would be, and just I'm just going to kind of wiggle the knife here, and then just going to try to cut at about a 45 degree angle like that. And let's see. 
And just be careful where the knife is. Best not to have your fingers in the way when you're going through. Does that do it? Yeah, I think that did it. Okay, we got about a 45 degree angle cut right here. And we're going to do one on the other side as well. Now one of the pages on the plan here has a riverbed printed out. And what we're going to do is we're going to put it across the front here where the, water, where the uh, river goes and the water wheel is. So we're going to cut those out. But one thing before we cut it out, you'll notice that this thing sort of curls up on the end. That's going to be kind of a problem. Uh, I found that I, I would have thought that varnish, when you varnish something down, would stick it like glue. But apparently it doesn't do that. Uh, varnish isn't really sticky at all until it gets close to drying. So one thing that's going to help us out is to get rid of this curl in it. We want this thing to curl down, so take it off the edge of a table. Kind of do this to it, okay? We kind of want that thing to curl back. And this side right here, kind of get that to curl down. And the reason it has a curl, I think, is because it's a, you know, it's water-based ink, and it kind of soaks into the paper a little bit, and then when it dries, it wants to curl back. So, if you take that curl out of the paper, and if it if it humps up like this, that's perfectly fine because it'll stay down. But if the edges curl up, then it's kind of hard to to fix. The next thing you want to do is go ahead and cut these things out. And when you cut them out, you want to trim off all of the white. Now, I have oversized these so they will hang off the edge of the foam about a quarter of an inch. So if you cut a little bit of printing off, you're still going to be okay. You don't want any white to show. So take a pair of scissors and go ahead and trim this down and try to trim off uh, all the white around the outside edge. You see this is sort of curling up like this. That's a time to kind of get that to try to lay back down. And these two slots right here, you can cut them back a little further than what the slots show. That's kind of, uh, it may differ because you may have cut your angle on the foam a little bit differently. And this one right here is going to set right here and this flap is going to kind of bend down uh, into the hole a little bit. Now this hole in the foam is going to be a little bit of a problem when we try to pour water in because it's going to go everywhere. I would take a piece of uh, medium to thick cardstock Flip this thing over, and we're going to go ahead and tape this cardstock onto the back. Um, and before we actually pour our Envirotex light or water effects into this, we will have to seal around the inside of the hole with some epoxy just to make sure it doesn't leak. This is just sort of a temporary so that later on we can use a five minute epoxy around here and actually seal it good. Now when you're trimming this part of the plan for the hole, you want to cut really close to that line. You don't want to chop too far in or you're actually going to see some of that. So try to cut right on the line but not get any white, uh, white left on the edges of this, if possible. Then after you uh, cut this, what we want to do is we want to kind of cut the slots back a little bit. Yeah, they go back about a half inch but you might have to go a little bit further than that. And what's going to happen is this is going to lay right here, and this is going to go uh, down into the hole. Now I had found that when we uh, bend this to go down into the hole, you really want to crease this piece, because if you don't crease it, you'll lay it down, and it'll pop back up. And you lay it down, and it'll pop back up. So it's a good idea to try to test fit that a little bit, and then take and kind of fold that back and put a nice, whoo, tore it there, put a nice crease on it and uh, then get it to stick down like that. I, I tore it a little bit there, but once we varnish it down, you're not going to see it because we've got tinted water going over top of it. It'll be fine. Now, if you're looking at this and you're wondering why in the world this right here is lighter than the rest, well, the reason it's lighter than the rest is because we're going to have a, uh, we're gonna have a stone arch that's going to be sitting right on top of it. And if we have just a solid black line, you know, around it, it doesn't look like anything is supporting it. Well, that will give it the illusion that, uh, you know, this actually goes down into the rock rather than just floating on deep water for some reason. So what we're going to do at this point is go ahead and varnish this down. Now, at one point I thought about maybe using kind of a, a spray gloss varnish. Uh, simply because I don't like the idea of having to wash out brushes in, uh, in you know, paint thinner. 
the problem with this though is if you spray it on foam it will dissolve the foam so not a good choice to use unless you want to pre-paint it brown and then you can do it with the spray if you like uh, since you have to make a trip to the hardware store for varnish anyway what I did is I went ahead and just got some of these really cheap foam brushes uh, you use them once and you throw them away that way I don't have to worry about cleaning uh, using paint thinner to clean out my brush with I just use this and throw it away so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take uh, we got our two pieces they're gonna go down here like uh, like so and I'm just gonna take my uh, varnish this is just clear gloss varnish uh, dip it in there and what we're gonna do is just paint over the whole surface and then we're gonna lay this uh, uh, lay this down on top of it here okay and we go up a little ways uh, there's actually going to be a foam layer covering the top edge of this so uh, you know we've got a bit of room to play around and get this so this is probably enough to get this first piece to lay down in here properly so pro start with uh, this bent edge that you have and try to get it to kind of lay down like you want and make sure that the other side of this um, goes off the edge of the uh, goes off the edge of the board here okay that looks like it fits it pretty well and like I said this varnish really isn't very sticky uh, so what you'll have to do is uh, you'll you know just have to lay it down and and uh, keep pushing it down if it doesn't seem to want to stick down properly okay with the other side down we'll go ahead and, and give this whole thing a coat of varnish on the top I don't know that it's critical, but for some reason I just feel better about sealing the whole thing before we put the Envirotex light on top of it. Now back onto this, I noticed when I glued these down, where the two papers overlap, it seems there's sort of a dark strip here. Now I'm thinking that once this dries that will disappear, because right now this paper is semi translucent because of the uh, uh, solvent in the varnish but once that dries it may not be but you know what just in case I'm going to take a really sharp exacto knife and I am going to cut right along here and I am going to go ahead and remove just a chunk of that paper right there to remove that line and on the back side I don't even think it matters because I think the stone is going to completely cover that back side as well. Let's see which sides are uh, so that one I'll just go ahead and cut this oops back there and that will get rid of uh, any dark line we would have from overlap of uh, overlap of paper. Okay a day's gone by and this is pretty much dried so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and trim off the excess paper as you know we've got about a quarter inch of extra paper here just to make sure you don't run short so what you can do is just flip this thing over. I like to use a cutting mat and just take a knife or a blade of some and kind of gear carefully uh, go along the side and we're just going to trim that off and try to do it without trimming your foam if you can but just go ahead and go along the edge and try to get as close to that as you possibly can. Okay I'm going to go ahead and paint the parts I need to. I think this paint really is just raw umber artist paint. I, I think that's the name. But just uh, I'm just taking a small brush, and what we want to do is we want to go ahead and paint the uh, paint the pink so it doesn't show up as pink here. And if you miss a little bit, it's probably not going to be that critical of a thing. But we're just painting over the pink, and we're painting over that white paper down in the bottom, so it's it's not obvious. 